Hey everyone, this is Luke with Serverless Guru. Today we're going to work on deploying AWS's GraphQL provider, AppSync, using an existing serverless framework. Now, if you didn't watch the previous video, we went over creating all of this, just creating a basic serverless YAML file from scratch, adding additional resources like Cognito and DynamoDB, creating a deploy script to deploy to different stages and so forth. If any of this looks pretty unfamiliar, go ahead and give that video a watch. Otherwise, we're going to be focusing strictly on adding AppSync to an existing platform like this. Now, just to get started with it all, you can see that all of our resources from the last video are in fact still set up. We have our different stacks all sent, and we have our new DynamoDB table with a um, data item in it, and our S3, and so forth, like our Cognito pool. So we know that everything's already set up, and we just want to include AppSync in it. The first thing we're going to want to do is add a dependency for it in our package JSON. This isn't strictly necessary, but the serverless AppSync plugin is pretty helpful in getting set up. And so I'm going to go ahead and add that to our package JSON, as well as to the plugins inside of our serverless.yaml file. Now the next step from here is to actually create our AppSync resources. So of course, that's going to start with a schema.graphql. Schema. And if you're not familiar with it, pretty much we're just defining our different data sources to be ready to handle our different requests and act as a go-between between our application and our DynamoDB table. You can see here, we're defining our queries, which get information, and our mutations, with change information on the data to, on the database. And we're defining which types of queries we have, getting single and getting multiple nodes. And we're defining our mutations, which are creating, deleting, or updating existing nodes. And finally, we're defining our note data type, which has the fields of ID, title, and content, all of which are strings with the ID being mandatory, which you can tell from the bang exclamation point here. And then lastly, just creating some input fields to go along with our different mutations, which you can choose to add them all together since they are effectively the same, but I like to keep them separated just in case they do happen to be different. So with that out of the way, the next step is to create a map template folder. And what this is really just doing is telling um, our AppSync um, mutations and qu uh, queries, which resolvers to use. If you look at the actual console for an existing one like this, you can see that our schema gets up imported just fine, but that there are actually resolvers attached to the different mutations and queries. So for example, if you look at create note, you'll see that there is a configuration in VTL set up here for the request as well as the response. These are super basic with a lot of variables, so they're very reusable. If you're not familiar with VTL, you can Google it, but just know for now that this is sort of how you're defining what happens with the request and which resources to change based on that request. And so with this mapping templates folder, we're going to input all of this information we just looked at. I'm going to separate these into a response and request folder this is kind of just a personal choice. I think it helps separate the different needs and makes them easier to look up. Again, that's gonna need to be a folder. <laughs> Let me try that one more time. Folder. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and import a bunch of different files in. With the request, I'm going to add a folder for DynamoDB. Um, putting that specification simply because it could be Lambda or some other resource. And I'm going to just include a bunch of different files off the bat. I'm going to go ahead and um, include a link to this repository in the video. So you don't need to worry too much about looking at all of these but just know that each one is kind of specifying something slightly different with the behavior. The create item request is doing a put item to a specific um, DynamoDB with a couple different variables in there. 
Delete is going to be very similar. Getting items is going to be very mild. Update is going to be a bit more complicated. The important bit here is that if you look at it, this is mapping strictly to what we're looking at in the console here. They're just exactly the same. And so this is how we're telling our backend to create this setup every single time we're deploying. And the same is going to go with those response folders. We're just doing a couple here. And again, generic response works for most everything. With some batch requests, there is something more specified. And so like in my case, I'm specifying the exact database I want it to go to. Um, it's a little cumbersome. So if you want to update your scripts or something to create a new file every single deployment, you can avoid having to hard code that. But for the sake of this video, I'm just going to allow the hard coding to make it a little easier. So now that we have our um, mapping requests and our responses, which again, is exactly the same, with those set up, we're going to go ahead and update the remainder of our serverless file. We've already added the plugin, but beyond that, we are also going to add in some additional IAM rules. Here we already have our Cognito set up, but we are going to add some additional rules for our app sync. Now this says DynamoDB, but it's actually an app sync service role for accessing DynamoDB. Same goes for the Lambdas. Um, we're not really using it for the sake of this video, but I think it's interesting to leave there to sort of see how they're working in different instances. Lastly, we're having a service role for our logging, which you can find in CloudWatch. Pretty much just gives you some interesting results on what's happening with your um, resources. So that can be really useful for debugging. So with those set up, our next step is going to be to add our actual AppSync resources, which I'm just going to go ahead and put directly below these DynamoDB resources. It's important that they are at the second indentation because again, it is fairly picky with that in YAML files. Here we're pretty much just defining the name of the service, what's authenticating it and so forth. And this is the part you're probably going to be doing the most hands-on work with or a change for yours because every single actual request needs to be defined here. Uh, we're saying that in this case, we have a data source of notes, which we'll get to in a minute. Um, it's a type of mutation called create note, which is the file we were doing um, over here. We're saying that the request file is located specifically in our DynamoDB um, request folder right here, and um, that our response file is going to just be in response and generic. And so we have every single different, like create note, delete note, update, get note, all of our different um, queries and mutations are being explicitly defined here with what they're doing and where they're getting their information from. And lastly, this mapping templates location is telling us where to get them from You'll notice it's starting directly at request and response because it knows to be looking in this mapping templates folder. And then down with our data sources, this is where we're defining what this notes even is. Um, it's a notes table and we're defining its name and service role based on variables we created in the last video that you could also define yourself if this is a new project. If you were to um, hitting multiple different tables with different queries, then you could simply just add additional data sources moving forward. From there, we're lastly going to add some additional resources at the first indentation level. These aren't super mandatory. This is strictly for our logging that we just looked at in CloudWatch. If you want those set up, you're creating the name, adding a role, just um, what its actions are, just some pretty generic stuff. So with that set up, the last thing we're going to be doing is editing our DynamoDB file. I'll go ahead and save that before I leave too. Um, you'll notice that right now it's pretty basic and all we're doing is pretty much defining our actual note table and what it's doing. But since we're not actually going to be impacting our table directly through our app now, we need to add rules for accessing it through AppSync. So here we're creating a role for our AppSync DynamoDB service role. Um, we're just defining some pretty generic policies and we're giving it access to 
most of the information we'd really need. So we'd be able to get, put, delete, scan, so forth, and defining the resource locations. So with all of this set up, we should now be good to go ahead and deploy it. I'm going to go ahead and npm install to make sure I have everything I need in here, which we should be pretty good to go. Just taking a minute, yep. And then I'm going to do npm run deploy at the test level. Now, ideally, this is going to leave our Cognito resources exactly the same, but it's going to start deploying everything else in the meantime. So yeah, Cognito is the same, and it's changing DynamoDB to reflect that. Now, while everything in that's loading, I'll just go ahead and show the end result of what we're going for. Um, again, this is still strictly a backend with no front end. So our goal is to create an AppSync API where when we alter it, we're going to be able to go in here, run queries, and then actually change our database. So let's see where we're at here. This is going to take a moment. And so at least for now, is this still going to be running? I'll go ahead and show you what the end goal is going to be. So here you can see that I have a create note mutation, which is simply looking for an input type of create note input, which again is something we defined in the schema. We have our note type and our update note input, which is all part of the mutation, or defined there as a mutation. So in our queries, here we're simply choosing the create note, putting the input and so forth. I'm going to put in just a random ID. I'm going to change this up into saying gift ideas. And we're going to go with flowers. So when I run this, you can see that my response is indicating that we've successfully created that. And when we go to our DynamoDB table, wrong one, I guess, you can see that this actually is the case. We've successfully created this file, and it's now available. And so that's how you're going to be testing that it's successfully uh, plugged in. Because again, remember, this table already existed. Um, everything else here is all the resources like our Cognito and S3 are already here. We are strictly adding in AppSync availability so that we can manipulate things directly from here, that it's connected to the correct data sources, um, has the right resolvers, and that lastly, it even has the authority to even mess with um, DynamoDB. So it looks like we are finally done with this one. So just as a quick um, confirmation that that did work, let's go back to the console, refresh it. Yep, and now we have it here. So again, we have our schema. I'm going to go ahead and enter those same ones we just saw, so don't need to run over them. And I'm going to enter the variables here. Just a quick note. Oh, that's a little odd. Um, this is not the way that you have to do this. Um, normally, you'd be calling this through the app, but I just think this is a nice little easy way to check if it's working. Sometimes, fortunately, it's a little delayed in recognizing that it's available. This is not an error, I promise. Um, it just sometimes takes a little time immediately after creation to work. I'm just going to try that one more time. And there we go. So now when we run this, we can see that the new today that we just threw in did work. Again, a little bit of delay there, but really not a whole lot. And so with just as simple as all of this, we were able to add a GraphQL layer onto our database app. And so yeah, that's pretty much it as far as updating our existing framework. In the next video, we'll look into building a front end to display all of this hard work. But in the meantime, I hope that you enjoyed the video and thank you for watching. Again, this is Luke with Serverless Guru and hope you have a great day.